Just how well will the Texans offseason acquisitions perform? I give my spin on the predictions for how the seasons will go. Welcome into the channel. I'm Cody Stutes. Let's talk some Texans. Let's talk about the big acquisitions the Texans made this offseason and give you a prediction on exactly how they're going to shake out in the 2024 season. From, from the Neil Hunter, the big defensive end investment, to the question marks at that cornerback spot opposite Derek Stingley with Jeff Okuda and C.J. Henderson, it would be fun to figure out exactly how these seasons are going to play out. But I got a little twist on this. I'm not just going to tell you what I think is going to happen. I'm going to spin a wheel, and whatever that wheel lands on, I'll give you that outlook for the player's season. It really goes about giving us a range of potential outcomes for ultimately where that player is going to end up. And if they blow past the top end of the prediction, well, that's great. And if they fall out the bottom of the bottom end of the prediction, that's terrible and horrible. So as you'll see here, I have my wheel with optimistic, great, amazing, best season they could have had. Pessimistic, eh, didn't quite live up to what we thought was going to be. And realistic, probably the most likely outcome, the most realistic outcome for that player. And let's start with the Neil Hunter. Optimistic, pessimistic, realistic outlook and prediction for Daniil Hunter. And it looks like we're headed for pessimistic. Okay, this would be not good for the Texans if Daniil Hunter ended up with a pessimistic season this upcoming year. That means he probably doesn't get the double-digit sacks. The injury bug, which has avoided him most of his career, pops up. And he's just not a dominant force despite being paid a tremendous amount of money. Now, it's worth noting a pessimistic outlook on the season for Daniil Hunter is still a pretty good season by most standards, just not 20 plus million dollars for the defensive end type of season. So I would think a pessimistic outlook for Daniil Hunter would be something along the lines of like eight sacks, 12 games played, and just not as consistent and dominant as he showcased in his time in Minnesota with the Vikings. That's a pessimistic outlook on Daniil Hunter. Even then, again, that's a solid season, but that's not a solid season for a player that's making 20 plus million dollars a year. Let's get the wheel back up and see what a season would look like from Aziz Al Shire, the big linebacker investment the Texans made this offseason. And optimistic is what it's going to ultimately land on here. What's an optimistic outlook for Aziz Alshire? Well, the optimistic outlook for Alshire is pretty close to Fred Warner, one of the top tacklers in the entire NFL, a dynamic, incredible athlete that annoys opposing offenses on every level from stuffing the run to rushing the passer to helping out in coverage to being an absolute menace in coverage and intercepting the football a do-it-all, sideline-to-sideline, 17-game, unquestioned, no doubt about it, Pro Bowl, maybe even All-Pro starter. That's the optimistic outlook for Aziz Alshire. That's the best he can do. And look, if he gets past that, if he turns into Fred Warner 2.0, that's awesome. I'm just giving you what I believe an optimistic prediction on his season would be. Close to All-Pro, for surefire Pro Bowler, dominant, near the top of the league in tackles, that's exactly the type of season you hope to get from Aziz Alshire when you sign him and you pay him more than they were willing to pay Patrick Queen reportedly because, again, ESPN reported they wanted to offer Patrick Queen about $10 million a year. Aziz Alshire ended up with a little over $11 million a year. And an optimistic season from him, well, that would help soften the blow a little bit of a pessimistic season from the Neil Hunter. Sticking around on the defense, how about the big fella, the defensive lineman, Danico Autry? Let's spin the wheel and see what happens with Danico Autry and what type of season we're going to predict from him. Headed towards realistic for Danico Autry. Now, I think Danico Autry's realistic season is actually a really good season. It's better than what Jerry Hughes put together last year as the third snap count at the defensive end spot. And it's not nearly what Jonathan Grenard did. And yes, that's a pretty good season because way better than Jerry Hughes, but not quite Jonathan Grenard. That's a wide range. But this is a guy that 
should be a rotational piece. Yes, he could start on the defensive line and defensive tackle with Hunter and Anderson on the outside, but he's not going to get as many snaps as Will Anderson and Daniil Hunter. So you've got to factor that into his realistic approach. Realistically, he's definitely a guy that's capable of getting double-digit sacks yet again. He is a guy that consistently gets double-digit sacks. Now, it might check in just a little bit below that number. Maybe it's 9.5 versus 10.5 or 11.5 like he's done a little bit in the past few seasons with the Titans. But he should be a player that helps you out on the rush game, helps you out in the pass game, is a force when you use him in certain situations with the other edge rushers on the team, helps you at defensive tackle, helps you at defensive end, and plays a lot of football despite his age. That's a realistic season for Danico Autry, and I feel like most of us would take that from the defensive lineman. Notice I put D-line right here next to his name because he's going to play inside, he's going to play outside, and he's a fun little chess piece for D'Amico Ryans to play around with. From defense to the lone big offensive acquisition to this point, running back, Joe Mixon. What can Mixon bring to the table when we spin the wheel and we find out what type of season we're about to predict for him? A realistic season for Joe Mixon. What does that look like in 2024? Well, to me, it looks like easily a thousand yards from scrimmage and then some. He's a guy that is very capable of getting up to 1,500 yards from the line of scrimmage. And you start thinking about what the Texans possess from an offensive standpoint with C.J. Stroud, an offensive line that's going to be way better than what the Bengals' offensive line has been these few seasons if, there's a big if there, if they stay healthy. And the possibilities are kind of endless for Joe Mixon, even in the realistic outcome for what Mixon brings to the table. So a realistic season for Joe Mixon? How about, oh, 11.50 on the ground, seven touchdowns, and then throw in another 350 or so through the air, catching the ball, and let's say four touchdowns, and he turns into a big-time red zone weapon. Would you take 1,500 yards and 11 touchdowns from Joe Mixon? That'd be a really great season, and that's maybe even bordering into optimistic on what Mixon can put together in 2024. But he is absolutely capable of that on a Texans team that is going to run the football, is more talented on the offensive line than the lines he's played behind in Cincinnati, and is going to throw him the football as well. He can do it. The realistic outcome for Joe Mixon, well, pretty much what Joe Mixon's been come to known for. Come to known to come for. Pretty much what Joe Mixon does every year. About 1,500 scrimmage yards around double-digit touchdowns. Easier said than done, right? Jeff Okuda and C.J. Henderson. I put these guys together because the loser of this competition is going to end up as the backup to the other player, I would assume. And D'Amico Ryans, earlier this week at the NFL annual meetings, he talked about, hey, we have these guys in here because we believe in them. They're young. There's tools that we can uh, coach out or coach them with, or excuse me, coach up on them. And the competition is healthy. It makes everybody better. So let's see what the wheel has to say for these two. And really, this is as much as it's about each of these players, it's about that cornerback two spot opposite Derek Stingley. And wow, we got an optimistic outlook for Jeff Okuda and CJ Henderson, the cornerback two competition between those two for the spot opposite Derek Stingley. Well, optimistically, the skills and talents that both of those players showcase to make them top 10 picks, Henderson 10th overall in 2020, Okuda third overall in 2020, the, op the optimistic outlook on their production would be consistently showing those skills. Now, not every week, not 17 weeks. I'm not going to go that far even in the optimistic outlook on their season. But if you consistently get a solid level of play from whoever ends up, as the cornerback, and really the ideal situation is that one of them uh, starts and the other one plays well enough that it's a tough decision to not start him. He hangs around and gives you some significant depth on this team. Optimistically, consistency from them and a solid floor 
to their play because the floor has fallen out on both of these guys in the past couple of seasons a few times where they just look like they can't cover anybody. Well, if they could consistently produce at that cornerback two spot as well as limit the mistakes that they make at that spot, that's a really good season. I would say that Okuda, because he was signed first, maybe has a slight advantage over Henderson right now as we talk. Obviously, the play on the field when they get going in July and August and September is going to be what matters the most. But let's just say from the optimistic outlook, Okuda's the starter. He's a solid player around the level of what Steven Nelson typically was. And then he has a couple of nice moments throughout the course of the season with Henderson spelling him or Derek Stingley when they need a break, when they need a little bit of a rest, or should the injury bug pop up for them. Optimistic, pessimistic, realistic on the various acquisitions for the Houston Texans. What'd you think? Let me know in the comment section down below about the optimistic outlook for those players. Pessimistic, realistic. Are you pessimistic about that acquisition? Are you optimistic about a different acquisition? Let me know in the comment section down below. And on your way down to the comment section in the description, you'll see my friends at Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is the best way to play fantasy. You don't need my face that big. It's the best way to play fantasy. And I know you're saying to yourself, Cody, fantasy, that's football. Well, at Underdog, it's so easy to play fantasy for any sport, baseball, basketball, hockey, soccer, anything. It's the pick em format, predicting higher or lower on predicted stats, smash five together. You could 20 times your money. Heck, with scorchers, sometimes you can get even more than 20 times your money. It's 25 times, 30 times your money. And you can get in for just a buck on the entry into these pick 'em games. It's so much fun. It's so easy to play. And when you sign up, you're going to get two times your first deposit. That's right. Two times your first deposit at Underdog Fantasy. When you use my code in the description down below, Stoots, S-T-O-O-T-S, two times your first deposit with Underdog Fantasy. It's the best and easiest way to play fantasy. Plus, you can start drafting best ball football teams right now at Underdog Fantasy. And my goodness, is that fun even before the draft. Please always game responsibly as well. Check out my friends at Underdog Fantasy. They support the channel a great deal. I want you to support them and win some money while you're doing it. Appreciate you watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. I can't wait until we talk Texans optimistically again soon.